Hi, welcome to Driving TV and I hope you are well and welcome to another video on reasons for failing the driving test and this is episode 3 and on this video we are talking about poor positioning. Many learners they fail the driving test because their normal position is poor or is incorrect when they are driving. So in this video I'm going to cover why learners are failing for poor positioning. Let's start the lesson. Okay, so I'm going to give you some examples of why learners are failing for poor positioning when they are doing their driving test. Okay, so first of all, we know that in England, we drive on the left hand side. Okay, in the UK, we drive on the left. Other parts of the world, uh, they drive on the right, like America, France, and so on. But here in the UK, we drive on the left. So first thing you need to know that we drive on the left hand side. Secondly, when you drive on the left, you need to make sure that you drive in the middle of your lane. Okay, basically around one meter away from the pavement, basically around in the middle of your lane. Okay, that's where you should be positioning when you're driving on a normal driving. So not too close to the pavement and not too close to the center line. Okay, if you go too close to the pavement, then you are risking the pedestrians walking on the pavement and if you go too close to the center line then you are causing the oncoming traffic to move over to the other side okay so first of all you need to position in the middle of your lane okay if there are parked cars then you need to make sure you give them space going around giving them one door space so if they open the door, you shouldn't touch your car, okay? So when you go around, make sure you give them one door space. You need to go over and go round, okay? Giving that car one door space. Obviously, before going round, make sure you look around, look at the top and right mirror, and make sure there's no one coming, and then you go around, giving them one door space. One other thing before coming back again, Many learners, when they come back, they come back really quickly and too close to the part car. Make sure you go a little bit further and then come round, so giving them enough space. So basically, as you go round, make sure you don't go too close. You go round and come back, giving all round enough space for that part car. If there are plenty of part cars, okay, you go around and stay away from the parked cars one meter or door space and keep going and come back again. If you go parked cars on the other side as well, then you drive middle of the road, okay? You drive in the middle, giving them space, giving them space, you drive in the middle. Don't be too close and don't be too much over on the other side. So in the middle. What if you drive on a dual carriageway, okay? If you drive on a dual carriageway, you should always drive on the left lane. Remember, left lane is always the normal driving lane, okay? For any reason, if you do need to go to the other lane, maybe because there's road work, or maybe because the car in front is too slow, so you overtake, you go to the right lane, or the second lane in this case, and then after you overtaken the car, maybe the slow car, you must come back to your lane again when it's safe to do so. Okay? So you always drive on the left lane unless you need to go to the other lane for any reason because road works or the car in front is too slow. You go to the other lane and then you must come back to your lane again because if you stay in that lane too long and you could have come back, it was safe to come back and you didn't come back, you will fail your test for that. Why? Because left lane is normal driving lane, and the other lanes are for overtaking and going right. Okay? It's either overtake or going right is for the other lanes. Left lane is always normal driving lane. Like I said, if you do need to go to the other lanes, make sure you come back to your lane soon as possible, meaning one is safe to do so. Now on a roundabout, many learners, they fail because sometimes the roundabout doesn't have a road markings, okay? Inside, there is no road marking. Now because there is no road marking, you still have to maintain the lane that you need, 
okay so for example you need to go straight this is your car and you want to go straight which means you need the left lane now for you to use the left lane make sure there's no road marking so when you enter the roundabout make sure you make your own lane many learners they fail because they just go across and you can't do that you have to make your own lane just because there's no road marking it doesn't mean you are just gonna go across you still have to go round making your own lane and then come out okay so let me repeat many learners on the roundabout with no road markings they don't go round they just go across and they don't make their own lane and like I said straight ahead you need the left lane make sure you enter and make your own lane going round if you go straight over you will fail your test for that now here on your drive uh, make sure you drive in the middle of your lane not too close to the pavement not too close to the center line especially when you're going around maintain staying in the middle of your lane one of the problem the learners make in the test regards to positioning and they fail the test is because they don't stay in the middle of their lane they either drive too close to the pavement on the left or they drive too close to the center line on the right so make sure you drive in the middle if you drive too close to the left you are risking for pedestrians and if you drive too close to the right near to the center line then you are risking for oncoming traffic so make sure you maintain and drive in the middle of your lane on the left when you have parked cars give them one door space okay so you're giving one door space to parked cars when you have parked cars on both sides you drive in the middle of your road okay giving enough space to your left and enough space to your right so you drive in the middle of your road now the other problem the learners make is that when you have parked cars on both sides like here and the gaps are bigger from one to another try not to go in and come out because you know there is another parked car coming up for example here you know there's a parked car it's no point going in and then coming out okay if you see there is no parked car then yes you must come back to your side like here you come back to your side and you drive but normally if you see another parked car coming up don't go in and come out because that's going to confuse other drivers now just to give you an example so you don't get confused what i mean is that if you have parked cars on both sides or maybe one side you drive in the middle giving them space giving them space and then when you see gaps try not to go in and come out because you know there's another parked car here if you think there's no parked car here at all then yes you must come back to your lane and drive as normal but if you keep on having parked cars and the gaps are not too big it's no point going in and coming out because the car behind is going to get confused thinking maybe you want to park here okay so what i'm saying is if the gaps are smaller in between parked cars don't go in and come out all the time only go in if the parked car is quite further away maybe the gap is quite long gap and the parked car is quite far away or there's no parked car over there then it's okay go into your side which you have to go into your side but like i said if the parked cars are near to each other don't keep going in and coming out okay that's going to confuse others now here i am driving on a dual carriageway with three lanes which means that i must drive on the left lane because that's the normal driving lane so like i said this is a dual carriageway with three lanes and which lane am i driving in the left lane because that's the normal driving lane but if there is a place i need to go which means that i might need the middle lane which means i would change lane to the middle by looking at the mirrors signal blind spot i change and the reason now i'm driving in the middle is because the place i need to go i need the middle lane but i must come back to my lane again when i've gone to the place i need to go okay as you can see here i'm going over the flyover and now it's two lane which means i need to drive on the left lane out of the two why because that's a normal driving lane but after the flyover if there is another lane joins and my one becomes middle i must go back to my left lane again why because left lane is for normal driving lane as you can see here the flyover is nearly finishing and i can see there is another lane joining can you see 
Yes, there's another lane on the left, which means I'm going to end up in the middle lane. What do I do? Soon as it's safe to do so, I must go back to my left lane. Okay, I look at the mirror, look at the blind spot, put the signal on obviously and go to my left lane. Why? Because that is the normal driving lane. If I don't come back to my lane again and it's safe to do so, I will fail my test. So make sure when it's safe, you must come back to your left lane again. Now to give you another example, I'm driving on the dual carriageway here. And if you look at the sign here, I want to follow city center, which means I need the right lane. The left lane doesn't take me to city center which means now I have to change lane to the middle lane for me to follow city center. So I look at the mirrors, put the signal on blind spot, I go to the middle lane. The reason I'm in the middle lane is because I am following a sign which is city center, which means left lane doesn't take me to city center. I need the middle lane. So I'm following the middle lane and I'm going to be going over a flyover in a minute, as you will see. So that's the flyover and out of the two I'm driving on the left lane. Why? Because that's the normal driving lane. I'm still driving on the flyover. As the flyover finishes I want you to see what happens to my lane. Okay as you can see here I can see another lane joining from the left. Can you see? There's a road joining, which means my lane is now middle. What do I need to do? I need to go back to my left lane. If I don't, I will fail my test. But obviously, it has to be safe to do so. Look at the mirror, put the signal on and change lane. So the point I'm trying to make here is that left lane is always normal driving lane. For any reason, you need to go to the other lanes, middle lane or third lane. You must come back to your left lane again when it's safe to do so. Because if you don't and you stay too long on the other lane and you don't come back when it's safe to do so, you will fail your test. Okay? Now, some roundabout doesn't have lane markings or it doesn't have any road markings, which means you must make your own lane, as you can see here. So if you are going straight, which lane do you normally need? You need the left lane, okay? When you enter the roundabout, make sure you maintain going towards left, making your own lane. This is important because if you don't and you just go over straight, you will fail your test for that, okay? So here, going straight, you need the left lane. So make your own lane going round, okay? Okay, that's it for this video and I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please do give a thumbs up. And if you're new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. And please do make a comment what you think of the video and hope to see you again on the next video. And don't forget to watch the next episode, which is episode four, which I'm gonna come with another reasons why the learners are failing the driving test. Bye for now.